my opinion, there's really no right way or wrong way. Yeah. There's just a lot of different ways, and you're going to find your way, what's comfortable for you. So I'm just showing you the way I do things. And, you know, when you're working on a mannequin, it's very, very different than a real person, obviously, because, you know, she's got colics and hair growth that you have to deal with. So when you, probably the most important thing before you start your haircut is your consultation. You know, find find out what they what they want. If they want a haircut, you can talk to them. I always like to have people show me photos. If I'm not clear on what they want, or if I'm a little, if they're showing me or telling me one a couple different things, I want to make sure our language is the same because there's no universal language. There's tons of words that mean all the same stuff. So pictures are always good. So I usually will have pictures ready, or sometimes they bring pictures on their phone. This is what I'd like to have. Sometimes the pictures are slightly different that they show me. You know, so you'll get that too. So it's just all about talking and communication, and don't start the haircut until you know what they want. Okay, it's safer that way. So, and just keep talking until you are convinced, and even repeat yourself and say, okay, you want this? Your hair will do this, it won't do that. You know, you have to be honest with them, let them know. Um, so there's all kinds of things in communicating with your your client that you want to consider before you start the haircut. So with Kathy, she likes to just let her hair air dry, and she likes to blow it out on occasion, but you can see she's got a lot of texture here. So, so when you have... <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and, and this is quite long. So what I'm going to do is just, just look at the shape, see what I need to cut to pop this up a little bit. But I also want to give her a cut that she can let it air dry or blow it out and still have it look completely two different looks. Okay? If she wants to jazz it up a little bit. So you just kind of go through, you look at the hairline. She doesn't have a whole lot of, she's got curl down here, but her her neckline is, you know, she doesn't have a lot of movement. Too, too bad. Sometimes it pushes up. She's got it all right here in the front. <laughs> right here. This movement here pushes her bangs right up. She's got that colic there. So you have to consider all of that when you're looking at it. Okay? So we were never told to, to look at the neckline. Mm -hmm. um, what's in, in, in haircut? Like, what is that going to? Well, for someone like her, with it being this long, it's not that important because mm -hmm. the length is going to pull it down. It's going to lay the way it's going to lay. If you have somebody that wants a shorter haircut, or say they want a, a short haircut with fringe on the neckline, mm -hmm. you know, you want to you want to look at this to see is it pushing up. You know how some people will do what she's doing here in the front, mm -hmm. pushes it up. So you can't, you have to take that into consideration. I love cutting necklines, short necklines, because it's kind of like the signature of your haircut. You know, everybody's neckline is different. Mm -hmm. So, and you, if you cut with the neckline, um, depending on what you want. Now sometimes if you're having a short haircut and you're, you're wiping all this out, mm -hmm. you might want to take this really short. If this is pushing this way and popping this hair out, mm -hmm. you might want to take it just real short right here mm -hmm. and let everything come down to it or over it. It's all going to just fall naturally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For somebody, like I said, with long hair, it's not, it's not that important. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to go short or mm -hmm. a short bob or the... Where going to be visible. Yeah, where it's going to be visible. Or if you want this to all come right down here and lay nice mm -hmm. in a straight line. Sometimes you get that hair that pushes, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. you might comb it down straight and cut it and then it pops it up pops up, okay. and it's crooked. So a lot of, there's all kinds of little tricks to do for that too, you know, so unfortunately we're not doing a short haircut today. So I'm just going to start and I'm really, what I'm looking at to do, ultimately she wants to bring her length up a little bit. I told her maybe we will today and maybe we'll do it for class and then shorten it later. So. What I want to do is definitely get this up. This is too long. For her curl, um, you also have to look at the wave pattern. You know, sometimes you can cut that curl out depending on how big the wave pattern is. See, if I were to cut her hair this short, 
she's not going to have a lot of wave in there. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody like you that has a tighter curl, if you cut your hair short, it probably gets tighter. Mm -hmm. it does. So, so that's another thing. But th there's so many different types of hair that that's the fun part of this business. You're going to find everything. You know, you're just going to see everything. And sometimes you're going to be going, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do with that. So you just have to think about, if, if you know, I, I like to say, there was um, a famous guy that said, if you learn the rules like a pro, you can break them like an artist. So if you understand what you're doing, when you're doing it, and the more you do it, the more experience you have, the more you understand it, then, you know, you can make it work for you, or for them, I should say, for each individual, because everybody is an individual. You can do the same haircut on 10 people and it's not going to look the same, okay? Okay, so what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do here is just start with little tiny point cut snips on that top layer, dry. This is all completely naturally dried to see what it's going to do. So this is pretty much how it is. This is what it is. And I want to, I'm going to start right here in her crown and just pick up a piece so I can see right where that's going to fall. Here's the length, here's the shortness here. So I'm going to, I want to shorten this very top layer just a little bit. So I'm going to take a section. Your sections are very important to keep them clean. Hi. Oh, Not everybody comes to dry hair when they cut it. I do because I'm still holding it soft. You see her wave pattern mm -hmm. right in there? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this up like this. I'm going to preserve the length by angling my fingers. And then I'm just going to point cut this off. And you have to hold that tight because when you go past that first knuckle, which I don't like to do, I'm only going to cut here where I'm holding it tight. Okay, so I've got that and I'm cutting it, point cutting it. I'm not stretching it tight. I'm holding it taunt but I'm not stretching it so when we you know when I shampoo her hair and get her wet and pull this up it's going to be not precision let me put it that way because I'm not holding it tight so I'm going to just drop that down and look at and because I'm messing with it too of course it's going to get big and fuzzy but I can see where that puts that layer mm -hmm. which kind of balances that out a little bit more now, if I want to take more of this out, then I would pull this out at the bottom. And cut it at a 45 degree. Does everybody understand what, I, what that is? So you'd cut it in. But normally what I would do is cut the, the length first. But I wanted to show you guys, cutting curly hair can be really fun. Are you taking out the triangle? Sorry. It's no, actually, I'm, I'm creating, creating a little more of a triangle okay. here. You mean this way? Yes. Yeah, because of her hair. Okay. Because of, she wants to be able to let it air dry and just have a nice shape and, and be a little shorter and not so crazy wild. But on Kathy, if we, get, if we do too heavy of a layer here, she gets earmuffs because of the waves. So that's what we don't want it to go. So I'm just going to whittle. So I took that little piece there, and now I'm just going to add a little bit to it. See, I'm only going on the top. I should be able to see right where I cut that, even though it's point cut. You see my, my guide in there? Okay, so I'm holding it soft again, and I'm going to take this out. Point cutting is just one technique that you can use, especially with curly hair. It works because you can kind of cut right with the wave. And it lets it fall. in with the wave pattern instead of being super blunt. So you see how that's changing? It's giving me a little more fluff on the top. So I'm just working. OK, so does everybody understand the rounds and the flats of the head? OK, so the flats are here, the rounds are here. Rounds here, and flats are behind your ear. OK, so I'm going to work just on this top part flat part of her head. 
So you can see when I pull this up, what's going to be left and what's going to be cut and a little bit shorter so that it's, it's soft, it's nice and light. And I'm following her head shape also. See how I'm holding that? As her head shape comes forward, I'm going to follow her head shape. So it's coming off, right straight off. So it won't be heavy around her face. We'll just work that right in. So now I have that whole top section cut. And it's just a little bit, just enough to fluff that out in her crown and give her this here. It fills this in. So I'm going to take this and bring it up. I have my guide on the top. And it's only the top part on the rounds, just that little tiny bit. Comb it gently. And I'm going to cut down to my guide right there in the middle. I always check it when I drop it down to see where that's going to fall. Cutting curly hair dry is kind of cool, and I don't always comb it out like this. It just depends. She doesn't have a real tight pattern. If she had a real tight pattern to her hair, I may just cut in, you know, freehand it. But you have to be careful when you do that too. Okay, so you can see where this is falling. This is all going to be taken out and softer around her face. This I may take a little bit shorter, right on this very top. I'm going to wait and see. But you can see my guide is consistent through there. And by angling my fingers down, you can see that it, it graduate waterfalls into this, so it makes it a softer layer. If I were just to hold it up and cut it straight, mm -hmm. and you let that go, you're going to have a straight line here. As soon as you start getting the line. It's going to be a heavy, heavy line. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to see that line. I want it to blend in right now. I haven't obviously cut the bottom yet, but I want this to be just a real <laughs> soft layer. So literally, I'm working on the top of her head. Now I'm coming this way, and now I'm angling it just to pivot around her crown. Still, I'm not putting a lot of tension on it. So I thought maybe I'd cut in the shape while it's, while it's curly and, you know, air dried, and then maybe we could shampoo her and, you know, show you, a, you know, show you what it's going to look like when it's blown out. So I'm working around the top of her head. I can still see my guide. Why would, <clears throat> why would you adjust your tensions, Lisa? Because you're saying you're not putting a lot of tension on her specifically. Because of the wave. Because of the wave. And I don't want to just, you know, I don't want it to be stretched. Sometimes when you stretch your hair, especially, well, okay, when the hair is wet and you stretch it, it's going to snap back. So it, it, I just like to keep it, it's combed fairly consistent. Um, I'm just trying to cut more with the wave so I can see it better and see how it's going to fall. Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. Do you have another answer for that question? Um, no, I just like, <laughs> you said you weren't putting attention on it, so I wondered if everybody knew why. Oh, okay. Only well, when it's wet, you wouldn't, I mean, and, you know, you wouldn't put, you wouldn't, I don't want to pull this like this when it's wet. I mean, you can still see it's going to be pulled up there and you can still see it, but I want to keep it soft so I can see right where the wave is. Don't ask me why, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things I just, <clears throat> especially when it's wet, though, you definitely, you definitely don't want to stretch it when it's wet. If there's wave or colics or movement because it'll pop up and it won't be even. And I have her slightly off center too because that's where her hair naturally falls.
here I'm going to go a little bit deeper to soften that line without really making it shorter. It's just going to create a few shorter pieces. It's kind of fun to be able to whittle <laughs> when you whittle it here, if you have the time to do it. Okay, so you can see that that did, it just put this little bit of shorter layer here that's softer. to take the ear split and comb it forward to make it fit around her face a little more. So my shortest piece is there where I'm stopping my finger. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to, because I, I want to keep the length, follow it out with my elbow. You see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, does that make sense? So you want to hold it taut enough, but, but not stretch it. Now sometimes you do want to stretch it. It's just, it depends on the, the texture of the hair. So I want to get a basic shape in here. So you see what, how I'm pulling that forward, keeping it flat on her face, pulling it forward. soft. My finger is perpendicular to the floor, so it's like a C shaping here. You guys all understand that, right? So if you do that and swing it forward, you can make that nice soft edge around her face without taking a heavy, heavy layer and making it real chunky. Sometimes you want the chunk, sometimes you don't. So I'm combing all the wave out, unfortunately, but you can still see the shape. You can see where that weight's falling. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to do her face frame here. I'm just kind of roughing it in, basically. So again, my finger's perpendicular. I'm going to, because this is how I want to cut it around her face, I'm going to slide this down and move my shears so I'm not taking out a ton of hair. Her hair is a little thicker on this side than it is the other side. I start and I whittle at it. I'm, I'm always whittling because once you cut too much, it's, you can't get it back. And to soften it and make it work in is basically what I want to do. Just so there are no lines. sides are very, very different and uneven right now. So I'm going to play it safe and cut it on the long side here. Make it a lot thicker on this side. Is it thicker on that side because is that the heavier side of the part? Yeah, she, well that and yeah, she much. has, her part is not that <coughs> much on the side, okay. but yes, that's okay. one reason why it's thicker. The other reason is just thicker. You can feel it, you can Oops. see it. So, hang on one second. Okay. Again, right so you have it. to be careful, especially when it's a side part, because it is thicker. You know, like your hair mm -hmm. is a lot thicker on that side. So, <clears throat> you almost have to cut it uneven to make it look even, which can be tricky, especially when you're doing layers. You know, if it's one length, it's, that's pretty easy, but when you're doing layers, you want it to, 
to look even when it's combed down there, and if you cut it even, it's not going to be even if it's parked on the side. Everybody knows that pretty much. So what I usually do, I'll pull this to see. I can feel it. A lot of times you... <laughs> I listened to a guy once, and he said he feels his he feels the hair with his eyes, and sees it with his fingers. So that made sense to me for some reason. I don't know why. It was Yosh out of San Francisco. He also taught me how to use the blenders to get rid of all the lines in your hair, which is a beautiful thing. When you have straight hair that shows every little cut line, the blenders help that. Now, see, I don't. This I have to soften right here because it's too square the way it falls and especially right here to me that's just too heavy so I have to remove that. So what I'm going to do is just take the very top layer right here which includes that little piece and I'm going to deeply point cut it and get rid of the weight. So I'm going to go straight in with my shears basically. Let's see if that doesn't soften that just a little bit. And then I'll finish this wet to maybe even it up. And then, of course, once it's wet too, we can see how it's going to lay when she lets it air dry next. So see, and a lot of times I think people make mistakes on cutting this back too far as well. So that's why I'm bringing it forward and or even just sliding it straight down into that C shape. It's hard on this side. You can also do this with your, with your shears and bring them right straight down. So you're just taking that edge off. So you're not cutting that heavy, heavy layer back here to get that clump that, you know, you get it and then you're like, oh, that needs to go away. Sometimes it's hard to make it go away. Fringe. I'm going to just snip that a little bit. So right here, I don't want to hold that tight because of that collar. If I comb this down and cut it like most people cut bangs and, and, and use her nose bridge as the guide and like, let go of that, this side's going to pop up. So, again, what I'm going to do is let it pop up before I clamp onto it with my fingers. So you just let it do what it, what it wants to do yeah. and you just work with it. So when it's wet and I comb that down, it's going to be really uneven. Mm -hmm. But when it's dry, and a lot of times I'll, I'll dry the bangs before I cut them. How they're going to dry them, you know, most people dry their bangs smooth mm -hmm. and then, you know, I'll go back in and cut them. Or sometimes I trim them when they're wet and then leave them on the long side so I can straighten them up when they're dry. Once I see how they're going to pop up. So I'm kind of, you see how I just let it jump up and then and I'm also going to pull it up like this. And if you, on the round of her head, you know, her forehead is rounding here. So pulling this out to her head shape would be here, right? So I already have the length cut in there, so I'm going to pull it back a little bit, lightly. The length is falling out, and I'm going to point cut this just to soften it so it's not completely one length. Okay, so it just creates a little tiny lip there, which you'll see after, once we get her dry. She, she can have, I don't know, you guys are too young to, to know the old shag haircuts. She had the best shag haircut when we were kids because of this wave. So, okay, so here's another way you can do this. Now, see, obviously I'm longer at the length right here, which I knew I was, but I'm not going to do anything with that just yet. The length, normally, you know, if I'm doing a wet haircut, I would start with the bottom and get the length in there. But this, because it's a fun... Fringy. I was hoping to get it, you know, nice and soft and fringy, so she might have some long pieces that could hang down under her curl. So now this is pretty much 
Doesn't look like much right now, but around her face. <laughs> you Probably can see. looks like poofs. <laughs> I have poofs. No, here's your poofs. Here's your poofs. <clears throat> you can see that the layers are light and shorter. So when this does get wet and dry natural, it's going to fall because I've been pulling it out. It's not falling right, but it'll fall into her nice wave pattern without a heavy, clunky fringe. And this, you know, I mean, we, we did trim this a little bit, but mainly this is all that we talk, took off is that top layer. So you can see just how that changes the way this falls. She has a little more lift here mm -hmm. and it cascades down. And I haven't really done anything to the back because I think we are going to go ahead and shampoo her and then bring this up and then I'm going to cut it in at the bottom so you can see how that will lay. So I just wanted to kind of demonstrate a dry cut, which, like I say, because I've been playing with it, doesn't, I can't see her, her wave pattern because I kind of pulled it out, but she could let this air dry and it would just be this soft cascading layer. Shorter than what it was, we took a fair amount off that very top layer, but, but it was just this much hair. Okay, so and just by angling it down, like I did, it works it into the longer section, which falls down here. If you want to bring that further, if you want it all to completely blend in, you could take this whole thing up and comb it right straight up, like you probably have learned to do with your long layers. Usually I see people do this and they cut it straight off, but you can see if you want to preserve that length, you can get that straight, an angle it like that, and here's your length. You're not cutting that length at all, but you're cutting right down to it, which I'm gonna go ahead and do. Hold it tight with your fingers there. So maybe we should just see what happens here. So that way it's all cascading. It's all falling into each other. <laughs> so in real world application, um, not so much for us in school, but like out in the salon world, would you recommend cutting your curly clients dry first versus, <laughs> or is it just personal preference? It's personal or? preference and sometimes, I mean it just depends on the curl. Sometimes mm -hmm. I've got one gal that has just got the, yeah. the kinkiest curl you've ever seen. It's tiny little mm -hmm. spring curls. A lot of times I will cut hers dry, especially on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of go through and cut it on the bottom because it will pop. Hers pops yeah. up so much. So you can cut this much off her hair and it looks like you took that exactly. much off. Yeah. So if she just wants a trim, mm -hmm. a lot of times I will do it. And I'm now combing through it. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of, I'll finger through it. Kind of right see, through, yeah, just right through it. Yeah, through And then just, you know, I might, I might lightly, not really comb it, but just kind of put my comb in there to hold it and then clean up the bottom. Okay. And then I might pull that down a little bit and then once it's wet, of course it's going to be like this. Right. But you can see that I might just clean it up a little bit. She just don't want to, and she can't do anything with her hair but let it dry. She doesn't blow it out. She doesn't, it's just tight, tight. Yeah. So, and then also with her layers, I'll pick them up. Like I was doing with her without combing through them, I might just pick up a section and cut. Oh, okay. kind of yeah. zigzag yeah. lightly, like yeah. slice cutting it. Yeah. Curl. Okay. Or pulling it out at a 45 mm -hmm. lightly so the curl's not stretched mm -hmm. and just snipping it, you know, to get the shape in the bottom. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so let's look at her bangs now and see. Actually, I'm not even going to cut those anymore until, until I dry them with the blood dryer. Okay, keep your head sideways. I think you'll be able to see the difference in how this lays. Just with that tiny bit, I mean, we really didn't cut much hair. Tip this way. Yeah, she's got a lot less hair on this side.
but you can see when she, you know, getting rid of this, when she lets it air dry, she's going to have a little, it's a little shorter, but it's softer. You know, it, it lifts up, but she's got a little more lift. Now let's look and see what it looks like wet. So when it's wet, you can comb this completely, and you want your sections combed completely clear. Okay, see that's, you can see my layer, my guide in the front. So I'm just going to clean that up just a little bit on that one. And this is the long side, so it's going to be a little longer here at the bottom. So it's pretty, you know, it's still pretty uniform. It's not precision, so to speak, but it's going to work for her hair. And it's still pretty, you know, you could see that that worked out well. So. Now, if it was straight hair, would you be more mindful of the precision of it? But because it's curly and it's going to... It moves. Mm -hmm. So you kind of want to make sure, it. yeah. So it's not, I mean, you want it to look... <coughs> Precision, if curly mm -hmm. hair can look precision, but you want it to be balanced, I guess is, is the better word. Um, so I'm going to bring her length up just to get some of this out of my way. And I'm going to do horizontal partings. Very important that you keep your, usually you, uh, if you follow your, your cut with your parting. It's going to be consistent on both sides and I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. And I'm taking a rather large section again because she's longer. For my guide down at the bottom. Okay, so it's a horizontal parting. Mm -hmm. You want to keep them nice and clean even here. You know, if it was a diagonal forward parting, it would be like this. That's how we mm -hmm. cut hair at school. Okay, so to cut hair like this, if, if I were going to do uh, an A-line bob, that's how I would start it. Short hair moves, cut, long hair start like this. <coughs> So short hair moves long hair, so you have to make sure, again, i got to do this so I can see. Lisa, can you say again why, <clears throat> just for clarification, because mm -hmm. um, I've heard this a million times, but it took like a million and one for it to sink for me. Mm -hmm. You said you take the horizontal line. Why? And then why would you take the diagonal forward? Okay, well, I'm just showing this. Right. Okay, so the diagonal forward, if you were going to do a swing bob, short hair moves longer hair, right? Everybody knows that. If you were going to do a haircut going shorter in the front and longer in the back, a V haircut, you're going to change this line from here to here, okay? And then you're going to follow your part line with your comb and your cut. So if I were going to give her a, a, an A-line bob, or a graduated bob, either one, where I want it longer in the front, shorter in the back. So that's pretty even. You know, it's pretty with the angle of the haircut. So what I would do is, is come right down the center, keep that nice and clean. I'd comb this flat, keeping this straight with your line here. And this straight, so this, actually you're looking at a, a natural hair fall. It almost creates an 11. You can see that. I don't want to go this way with it on this part line, and I don't want to go this way with it. I want to keep it straight. But I'm also going to keep it straight. I'm going to mirror my cut with my and my fingers to the parting. Mm -hmm. So see that? Okay. So that's where I'm going to cut. So if I do that, and I have this parting right and even on both sides, then when I come to this side to do the same thing, mirror my fingers with my parting, 
you're going to have a little bit of guide there to follow. Then you should end up, these points should be pretty close. It's the width. Yes. <laughs> no, you know, you always have to go back and forth a little bit. But your guide, sometimes I'll spend five, ten minutes just on the guide alone to get the guide perfect. Because that's going to, if you follow that and you don't lose it, it's going to keep you consistent through your whole haircut. And you'll get quicker and quicker with it. Okay, so that's going to bring that hair shorter here and longer in the front. A horizontal parting is going to, I'm going to mirror my, my finger to my parting, so what am I going to get? A straight bar on a straight haircut. And again, if this parting is straight and clean, looks pretty good, um, you know, then your cut's going to be straight and clean. Okay, now see here, I'm going to comb her hair like this, let it bounce up how it wants. You said you wanted your hair like collarbone length? Yeah, but you can cut it any length, it can always be shorter. Now if her hair, and I see this happen in the salon all the time, <clears throat> if her hair were long enough and she wanted it trimmed and it's coming down here, I'm going to have her stand up. Mm -hmm. I see so many kids do that and it's not going to be a straight line when, when you get rid of it. Because I'm coming up here, I don't need to have her stand up because it's not hitting the chair. But I need to sit down. <laughs> I like to be closer to eye level. David, can you see? Okay. And I don't like the cape if, if, if it's, a lot of times I'll put the cape on backwards so I have a nice smooth surface to work on because the snap gets in the way. And... Okay, so I'm going to start with just this side. And you're, you're still just... splitting your section. In I'm now. splitting my section for right now. I'm going to comb it down. I'm going to let that wave kind of pop in there. So it's combed straight, and just because it's curly, I'm going to let it bounce up. And I'm going to cut it. I'm mirroring my parting with my shears. Let that bounce up. Hold it. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now, if I were to comb that flat, which I'm going to show you, okay, these are pretty close, it's going to not be even going to be fairly even. This side's a little bit longer, so I'm just going to take that. But but it's not a, you can see it's not a precision cut, but it's going to be, well, I shouldn't say it's not precision, but you want to, you know what I'm saying, you want to cut with <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I'm taking my next section is going to be only a small section straight over so I can see my guide through it. You always, you never want to lose your guide. If you lose it, back up and find it before you cut. Because if you cut one time and you lose your guide and you're off the guide, it's going to throw your whole hair cut off. Now sometimes I'll do this too, but I'm not really pulling the hair tight. I'm going to put my finger under there, find the guide, and I'm cutting right on the guide without putting tension on that hair so it pops up. So it's just, you can see I'm not stretching it at all. And I don't know about you guys, does anybody have a side that they always leave longer? Okay. What side? Which side? My left. My left too. Left. Everybody's left. Yeah, left. left. Oh, I left my right. right. You do? I'm lefty. <laughs> oh, that's why. I feel okay, like it's so the opposite of your dominant hand. Yeah. I've been trying to figure out and correct it my whole career. And it's, uh, <laughs> I figured it's just my body position. Yeah, so I'm, right. I'm right here. Yeah. 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 So one time I had a client that is a seasonal client, so she goes to someone else in the summer, and she says, oh my gosh, my guy up north always leaves the right side longer, and I'm like, perfect. <laughs> this is great. I'll take Balance care of each you. other. Yeah. <laughs> and 
And the nice thing is too is if you're you know you get to know your clients as people. They're not just you know putting money in your paycheck. They're they're people. They become your friends and close acquaintances sometimes. The more honest you are with them, the more they're going to trust you. And you know. I just tell them, sometimes they'll say, oh my goodness, I think my left side grows faster. I'm like, no, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> Something I've struggled with my whole career. Mm -hmm. So I'm cutting this blunt for now. Lisa, would you recommend taking smaller sections by every time you come down? So you don't lose that guy? Well, I can see it. I don't know if you guys can see it from where you are. Yeah, you don't ever want to, you always want to be able to see that guy through your section. So if it's a big, huge section and you can't see it, you need to adjust it. And see, I always like to do this after every section. Mm -hmm. And again, you can see it's a little bit longer on this corner and that's usually it's this from here forward is where I always have to come back and correct it so I don't want to move it over I want to keep it the same and just whittle a tiny bit until you know I may have to do that numerous times through this haircut but, but the most important part on this right now is I am taking each section is following the section, the previous section before, and maintaining that, the line. It's, you know, because you're cutting a round head in geometric form, which is kind of weird. And in the classes that I teach in the shop, I like to, I like to, my whole purpose is just to teach everybody, to get them to understand if they cut it here, it's going to fall here. And it just depends on where you are on the head, because you have flat spots, round spots. And I have a question. <clears throat> I noticed that you're not having her like to put Tip her head down. down. Yeah. Good question. I have found throughout my career, and a lot of times I will after I get that, if I'm doing a nice sharp line, and especially if they want it to swing forward, okay. if I were to comb her hair and have her push her head forward, which most people do, and she wants her hair at her shoulder. So I cut it here at her shoulder. Okay, here's the cut line. I just cut, put your mm -hmm. head straight up. Mm -hmm. It comes way down there. Okay. So a lot of times on my very first haircut line, on my first guideline, I will have them, especially on bobs, it's fabulous to do this on bobs, have her head look straight ahead, get that line in there, and then I might have her tip down so I have the line in there, and when you when you have her tip down and then you lay that right flat and recut it, you're just cleaning it up. Because mm -hmm. all those little, all the hairs that are underneath are going to be longer. Yeah, it makes it kind of look like a broom sometimes. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. So, but you can still see your guide. Mm -hmm. You can still see your weight line. So in, in, in essence, what you're doing, if, if I had her hold her head up straight and cut this line, and then tip down, I'm going to see all these little lines that are, or all the hairs that are laying flat are going to be longer underneath. So I'm kind of undercutting it. Okay, so it's really not necessary to have them put their heads down for every single haircut. I don't feel like it is. Okay. Because you're going to have that clean up anyway. So you yeah. might as well try to nip it in Especially the butt as much, much as you can. Blunt cut like how you have her now, just going straight across. Right. That's what I'm running into. If I'm doing a blunt cut and we have their head down, as it's soon as they come up, I'm like, oh crap, because everything is not all even. Handy. Right. Yeah perfectly either because of the wave right mm -hmm. now but if she was completely straight and I did that and mm -hmm. had her so yeah it wouldn't be even mm -hmm. so leaving the hair getting that guide in there first <clears throat> and finding where you want that to fall and then putting her head down the guideline that you just cut is moving up and everything underneath is hanging down here that's mm -hmm. what you want to clean up so that's going to be, it's like an undercut. So when she comes back up, the guideline comes down over that stuff you just cleaned up. So it's just kind of a, it's just a little, one of those little tricks that I pretty much 
always have them hold them their head up straight. I feel that tires up the client too, and then they're you naturally are going to want to try to look up, and that's when it just starts to get all. Yeah, and all most messy. yeah, most people will because so many people do that. They want to cut right on that neck, which is fine. So that's just the way they do it. Um, in my brain, that's how I ration it, and that's what works for me. But most people will want to put their heads down when you start cutting their hair. Mm -hmm. And I always just have to say, no, hold your head just completely straight for me for just a minute. Or five or ten, however long it takes. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather have their head up comfortably than try to, like, you know, adjust while their head is down. Yeah. So I'm always, after every section, I want to see what that's looking like and see the balance here. And I'm still seeing <coughs> this corner. I'm just going to pull on this and just shorten it a smidgen. See, to me, when I pull it down, it doesn't look like I should be cutting anything off it. So I don't want to take much. And right now I am just basically cutting this one length because I want to leave it heavy at the bottom so I can cut in the layers. You know, sometimes if you wanted to graduate it without, you could graduate it out. You could have her tip her head forward. And with each section, you know, elevate it just a little more until and just keep it tangent off the head shape though. You don't want to bring it up here so it buckles or down here so it curves. If you're trying to build graduation, you can do it that way, horizontally. Mm -hmm. I tend to like to do it vertically mm -hmm. because I just, again, I don't like seeing lines in the hair, so <coughs> I try to get everything to blend and just create the shape more than the lines. And this way too, as you're going, especially you can, you know, if you get if you get something too short, you can correct it if you're paying attention to it. If you get one side too short and you're like, rather than take this side shorter, you can graduate this side down just a little tiny bit. And usually it's such a minute thing that it's going to balance the haircut without making it look like you just corrected a mistake. But if you're not doing this and seeing where that's hitting and where it's falling, then you wouldn't know to do that. See right now it looks pretty uniform. See all these, this top here is going to be layered in anyway, so. I think what I struggle with the most when it comes, to, especially when it comes to cutting like a blunt cut, is going like transitioning from the back to the sides mm -hmm. and having it be even. Yeah, because the shoulders tend to get in the way. Not a lot of that sure. depends on the length. I mean, it's mm -hmm. so much easier if you're cutting right at the shoulder. But if you're cutting down here, or even where yeah. we are, it's at the tip of the shoulder. So that's a little easier, even though you have to pull it out. Um, there's all kinds of ways to get around that, too, to get it to where you want it, you know. To, I found to that sometimes in. having them, like, turn their head so their mm -hmm. hair's not on their shoulder, it, easier but and sometimes I have them turn and cut it in the front and sometimes I have them turn and cut it in the back yeah it just depends on the length of the hair the length of the hair and their body shape too if you have this is going to sound horrible but if you have someone with huge breasts and you're trying to cut here mm -hmm. and it happens to fall there it's kind of uncomfortable <laughs> mm -hmm. so you so you could go this way if they're if they can turn their head you know, some people have very, very stiff necks. So what I would normally do in this situation is probably, I'm going to pull this back just a little bit, which is going to actually let it come forward a little more natural into a forward sweep. You, you don't do a subsection for for that part. You just pull it all, all back. If it's that thin, it's not probably not. Yeah. You know, because it's if it if it was this thick, yes, I would definitely cut. So I'm just going to turn it right back. Whatever doesn't reach doesn't reach. 
so I'm pulling it back this way. Now, sometimes too, especially at this length, when you have, so see, it, it swings a little bit forward. A little bit of over direction. Yeah. Now, sometimes if you want a real shaggy look, and this is like, it's just too thick and it's not falling in right, sometimes what I'll do, once it's dry, is come in and just hand cut this out into a V right over her shoulder. So it just kind of splits and falls naturally. Now, if you were to look at it, again, it's not going to be precision, but it's the way it wants to lay, and it's moving. So, yeah, if you don't want it to hit there, you can definitely angle it. Yeah, just a little bit. That's another little trick that there's all kinds of things that you figure out. You just kind of figure out. I have a, a gal that has got very straight hair, that straight and thick. It's like doll hair. It's beautiful. It's always shiny, you know. But you have to, I have to point cut that and, and texturize it so much to get it to fall into the shape without seeing those lines. And I do that on her. When she likes to wear it a little longer and she wants it shaggy and fringy, it always just comes here and flips. So we just kind of take that out and it really works well. So that's kind of personalizing your haircut for your client that not too many people are going to do it exactly the way you do it. So, you know, you can follow haircuts. People can follow your haircuts to a point, but you're an individual. You're an artist, and you're going to do it the way you do it. Not everybody can follow that. People that work with me in the salon, if they're watching and observing, a lot of times they'll do what I do, and then sometimes they just do something a little different to make it their own. So. I'm just rounding these corners a little bit so they're not so harsh. Do you feel lighter? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you feel lighter? I was just thinking the rounding the corners. If you don't round those corners, because the girl up north sometimes squares them off too much and it feels like puppy dog ears. Yeah. <laughs> just it's panel so here. <laughs> And when I say something, that's what she always goes back and rounds that corner. <clears throat> and we may do even more, because I think we'll um, probably blow her out. Smooth. Like a copper spaniel. <laughs> His ears. <laughs> okay, so I have this softly layered the way I want it in the front, pretty much. Now I just have to blend it in with the back which she has tons of hair back here. So what I'm going to do back here, <laughs> what I'm going to do back here, I comb this down. I want to section out a center right in the middle, which, again, you still want to keep it nice and straight. So you can either do it with your comb. I usually just grab it with my fingers. You just want to be consistent with the way you're doing. And are you leaving the perimeter out or are you grabbing it as well? I am going to show you what's going to happen if I comb this out and cut it at a 90, where the weight's going to go. Okay? So from her head shape, yes, the perimeter is going to fall out. So I'm not going to cut the length anymore. So pulling this out straight out 90 from her head shape is right there. My mm -hmm. fingers are going to, you know, this is how much weight is going to be at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to point cut it just because that's what I want to do. It's not a deep point cut at this point. But again, I'm putting tension, but I'm not holding it super tight. So a 45 degree off the head shape is right there. 45 degrees. Now it can be here. You can do it here. But that's, you know, I mean, 45 degrees is 45 degrees. So if I were to cut it here, I'd want to come out so I don't cut the length. If I cut it here, okay. it's I, I wanted to visually see that triangle that I keep picturing. Yes, there's the, tri yeah. Here, okay, oh, okay, so here's your weight. So what we were talking about, the triangle before. Mm -hmm. And now I see the other triangle at night. Yeah, so. there's your weight right there. Mm -hmm. This is shorter up here. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the triangle, if you, if I wanted to give her a, what I call a sphinx haircut, where it comes mm -hmm. out like this and mm -hmm. bevels in at the bottom, that's what I would do. I would keep everything right where it is. 
her her uh, weight or her length is there. So I usually run my finger right down to that. Obviously, there's a little bit that falls out, which is fine. If I cut it here, and then I would work this up a little bit to where this is coming out 90, but you're cutting it at a 45. Yes, that's usually what I'm doing. Yeah. I just wanted to see. So okay. what's what's going to happen is your layer is going to stop here, and you're just going to get that little bevel here. Mm -hmm. So you can, depending on where your length is here, you do the same thing for a short haircut. If you wanted a, her hair was here and it was wanted to swing forward, you do the same thing. Her her length would be right there, so you'd start here, and you and you create that volume. You build that volume up here. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So what I want to do here is let her length drop out. I'm going to comb it at about a 90, and you can see that's about at her occipital bone. And you're pointing again because you don't want to make that just extra little, line. yeah, little point, little point cuts. I could, after she's dry and it's straight, I may go in there deeper. I can see my guide here. I'm still at a 45. My fingers are perpendicular to the floor, and I'm only going to comb this right out 45, literally from her head. I mean, 50, 50. <laughs> 90 from her head to show you where this is going to fall if I don't do anything else with it. You can see that little bit on the top that's falling out. It's the little layer that I created, that little piece here. You can see how heavy this is. So if I were to go all the way around like that and just comb it completely 90 off her head shape, it's going to create just this loose softness here with a lot of length, you know, a lot of one length up here. I'm not going to do that because I, I don't want it to get too heavy right here. So what I'm going to do is after I work that up and get all of that. 90 degrees, then I'm going to start and I'm going to do little tiny inch increments and I'm following her head shape. Can you see the elevation? Mm -hmm. And I'm only going to cut an inch of that. And I'm taking it. There it is again. I've moved it up a little bit and I'm following her head shape. So I'm taking that weight out. I'm going to connect it to that little piece I put on the top, that little softness, right there. This is just walking it all the way. I'm walking it right up. And this is how I do most of my layered haircuts, unless I want it super heavy. Okay, so from there, I'm going to, this is already cut. I'm going to take a pie section, so we're going to, you know, come around. But I'm going to take the new section, a little skinny section. And I'm going to actually use this whole thing so I can see my guide really well. Make sure it's combed through. There's my guide. Mm -hmm. I'm at a 90, starting there. And I'm going to walk it up. Still keeping the, the layer soft in my fingers. Holding it taut here, not so much here because I'm not cutting there, so that doesn't matter right now. <coughs> and if you do just a little inch at a time, then you're not going to, it's not going to do this. It's going to be nice and round. If you take too, too big of a step, you're going to have steps in this line. the top. So you don't want to keep cutting the top. You want to cut to it. Finding my line. <coughs> Always paying attention to how much is falling out there so you don't cut the, the length. A lot of times too when I'm point cutting I cut myself but if I'm <laughs> Taking my time and doing it correctly, I lay my bottom shear there and I'm gonna slide it. So I'm you okay. can't. So you can't if you're chopping at it. You're, mm -hmm. you're probably gonna cut your finger. 
So I'm kind of shallow point cutting this. You saw me go a little deeper. When her mm -hmm. hair is dry, because it's so thick, you may see me go deeper just to mm -hmm. finish that off. But it's not going to really change the line. It's just going to get rid of those lines. So you can see this is still a little heavy. We may deal with that later. What I'm trying to do with her is make it so she can, because I have this issue too. I've got this curly hair, and I like to wear it straight sometimes and curly sometimes. Um, to have a haircut that it works both with and the shape is nice is difficult. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to find that, so you do have to kind of tweak it here and there as you go. And you can always go and take that weight out yep. one inch dry. Yeah. And, and you should always uh, detail your haircuts after they're blown out. Yeah. You know, once in a while you might get one, you're like, oh, I don't want to touch it, it looks great. But most of the time you're going to have a little cleanup work. And it's when, sometimes when you're out in public and you see somebody that's like, oh, I just want to clean that up. <laughs> that's all it is. It's just a little bit of cleanup work that they neglected to do after it was dry. Yeah. Just does. Okay, so I'm still behind the ear, mm -hmm. but the hairline you have to remember goes from here to here. That's why everybody gets, you know, you didn't make your mistakes right by your ear. <laughs> okay, so I'm pulling that out. I'm watching what comes out, and we're right at the top of that. So that's still going to fall down. So usually when I get to the ear, I over direct it just a little bit back so I can transition into the sides okay. Now these sides are already cut, so I'm not sure that we want to cut them too much more in the layers, but maybe we'll look and see how they work in with this. Because remember, I pulled the sides all the way up to preserve the length. So now I've got some that I've already cut, and well, I've cut both of them actually. We're going to see how this, I'm going to pull this all the way up here because I want the weight here. So you can see my guide, it has changed a little bit instead of out here. If I comb this out here and cut it, I'm going to lose all the stuff on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Which would make it fall over her shoulder okay, because mm -hmm. it's going to be thinner there. So you may want to do that, you may not. You may want to wait until, I'm going to wait until we're done. So I'm changing that, you see that guide is, is there. And I'm moving it up to preserve a little bit of the length. So I just changed it, but I'm still going to connect it there. Does everybody see that? Mm -hmm. It's just a little transition area to keep it full down here right now. So I'm just going to look at it so that's good enough. Yeah. If I over-directed it all back, it definitely would make this whole section shorter. And, and swing it forward. But yeah, I want her her layers to be, to come all the way around and to lighten up. I'm looking at this, okay, one, one half is cut, one half is close to one length. So you can see what that does. Mm -hmm. If you wanted, you know, we want this a little fuller in through here for her. So, but you can see where that weight is too. That, like I say, I may want to take it out. If I do, we'll, we'll show you how to do that too. Um, this, say, say she wanted just a super heavy bottom and a super light top, I probably wouldn't do much to this. You might want to take a little bit more and comb it up and angle it in to reach the, the length and take out some of this in here just to soften it. So it's just two different kinds of layering. You know, it depends on where you want your weight as to where you hold it. And because I cut that at a 45, or at a, at a 90, the weight's here, and then it softens here, but it still gives me that little bit of a, because of her curl, a 45 look, which I didn't cut it at a 45, so. So now I'm just gonna come through and do the same thing. Consistency is gonna get you even on both sides. pretty close. Once you understand why you're doing what you're doing, it makes your whole world open up and so much easier mm -hmm. and then you just have it, you know. But there's always something you can learn too. I mean, 
there's a lot of great artists in this field, but not there isn't one of them that knows everything. <laughs> Can everybody see my guide through there when I pull it out? Yeah. And you can see it's fairly consistent just by doing this little inch at a time and only holding it where I can hold it taut. So I'm right at that transition point again, right behind her ear. Now, I'm not holding it, I'm not stretching it. Now, I would on, you know, straight hair, I would definitely hold that taunt and stretch it because you don't want it to buckle. With wave, I'm not minding the buckle because it's the natural wave pattern. And this is her long side, so this is probably going to be a lot longer here. So there's my line in there. If I would hold it out like this, again, I'd be taking too much out be taking all of, well this is her, her length right here over her ear. And that would cause a hole to be right there. It would right? cause that, yeah. That W, unless you want to put it in there. But a lot of times I would do it, I would prefer to do it this way and work the layer down into the length there on the side because it's such a traumatic area. <laughs> I mean you really can really is. just ruin your whole haircut <laughs> by the ear, you know. And you know the second you do it, too. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, crap. No. <laughs> and with, with Kathy, it probably wouldn't matter because, because, like I say, because of the, the wave and the movement she has in her hair. But when I blew it straight, you can see it. So. <laughs> they just keep going. Okay, so this side is heavier and shorter because it's straddling. Can everybody see that? So I've got to come back here and just tweak this a little bit. Always the side that <clears throat> you, you know, the, the side with the lesser hair, if it's a side part, is going to end up shorter. So I'm going to over direct it and just take that top layer out a little bit so it matches. <clears throat> it comes closer to matching the other side. You, you know, you don't, it's not going to be perfect, perfect because it's on the side. So, but you want the layers to fall somewhat similar <laughs> on both <laughs> sides when you when you drop it down. I'm going to go ahead and dry it and then I'll show you how I would soften this line here because that that right now it, it it's creating that weight like we were talking about. So it's not going to have a point point because I've cut it to the to the head shape. But when it's dry and straight, it's going to be completely different. So I'm going to do that real quick. But you can see, so this would be fine if she wanted to let it air dry. It's, it's, it's a good length for her. Her bangs aren't quite done yet. But, you know, so you can envision that this would be okay. She's not going to have major earmuffs on the side. It's just going to be a soft, natural, yeah, more curl on the yes. side. It's just crazy. <laughs> but you know, that would work without making her feel like you push her or something. So. You might even feel it more than you can see it. So you always go through and feel it. I always do that. You can feel it if it's thicker on one side. You can, so then you can take note of where you need to go back and just point cut it a little bit to, to even it out or to shorten it up or whatever. So. Using your mirror, yeah, that side, this yeah. side is definitely needs to be tweaked a little bit. But using your mirror, you know, the length looks pretty good. It's up in here. Well, this, this piece here, too. You do this, you can feel that, just that little bit right there. So make it a point to go through your haircuts. And I used to think this way until Nick Arujo, do you know him? Mm -hmm. Anybody? Fabulous razor cutter. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, so many people think, oh, it makes my hair frizzy when it's cut with a razor. What he said is, if it's cut with a razor and it's frizzy, your razor's dull. Mm -hmm. I think he said he gets, what, two, maybe three haircuts to one razor before oh. he switches yeah. it out. 
So that's a lot of razor. <laughs> and that's pretty much the only way he cuts, I think. So I'm going to, okay, so this is what I'm going to choose to cut for her bangs. I added a little more to that, just because that's where it wants to fall and I don't want it in her face. So when you're cutting a bang, you want to let it, you, you want to come into the recession, not past it, because when you, when you let this go, it's going to fill in that re recession. So you don't really want to come way back into here, because it's going to really get funky on you. So a little cool little trick, and it works, it's wonderful. My clients, most of them love it, some of them, they let me do it, and they decide, yeah, no, I don't like it, but most of them like it. So her bang's not that thick, and it's going to split anyway. I want to do this first. Just like I said earlier, I, I always comb the bangs up like this, unless you want them a straight, blunt, real heavy at the bottom. But even if you do, this softens that edge just a tiny bit without taking the length. Okay, so if you wanted this more opened up, you could take a tiny little section here, and I usually zigzag it. Actually, I'm going to show you. Can you hold this here? I'm going to take that much hair, and I'm just going to come in here, and I'm going to, this scares them when I do this. <laughs> <laughs> but see it's such a little amount and you have to start long because you see how quickly that popped mm -hmm. up where her colic is so you want to start long and make it shorter as you go okay so you see that so when I let this drop down over it she's got the open yes, that's that's cool. it, not only that but it helps to lift this Look if you want that little bit of lift or if she wears it to the side and she has these little it just makes it softer mm -hmm. and here. So this side is her heavy side, and I don't want to make it shorter, so I'm going to grab that heavy part again and just really cut down into it straight, just to remove some of the heaviness. If you angle your shear, the, it's, you're going to take out more hair. So you're just going straight in. So I'm just going straight in as straight as I can and deeper, you know, so I'm, yeah. See, I'm seeing the lines there. I don't like that. So I'm going to come through and find that line. Usually not very much hair. And it looks, it, it's not, obviously it's not blunt cut, but it's blunt enough to where it's creating a line. So I'm going to take my blenders about an inch out and just do this. And I moved out. It didn't change the length at all, but it's going to soften that line so it just kind of blends in and disappears. Sometimes, I, like I say, I cut the whole hair with the blenders, depending on the haircut. This just softens it. If I'm doing a whole haircut with blenders, usually, excuse me, it's shorter hair. I was and I might come hands. up like this, and I might go over this to where it's almost blunt, but there might be a few little soft pieces. And usually that's with shorter blonde hair that shows, every, that with a short layer haircut that shows every little cut line. This technique just takes that weight out. You have to play with it to know where to draw the line. <laughs> so they just kind of disappear into each other. It's still very layered. And you have all this up here, but you don't really see. It's not a, it's just a soft layer. Yeah, so she can, she can wear her hair. This is going to curl up and she'll have all this fullness here when it's air dried. And, you know, when it's straight, it'll be straight. Thank <laughs> you.